This is, uh, uh, hello. <laughs> hello and welcome to the Future Hidden Movie Gems podcast. I'm your host, Ty Spiker Christensen. An old crone, a little girl, and an insurance salesman. Oh, which level shall I do? And we've got Jordan Christensen on the podcast. Uh, hello. I can't think of a quote. I can think of one for you. Would you like to start in a gardening club? How would you like to be buried in a very, very deep hole? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dude. And we've got Cameron Mickle on the podcast. What happened to the man I married? He'd have believed me. Oh, him? He's gone. He's, he's gone. <laughs> uh passed up for the promotion and we've got nick on the podcast what up so guess what aunt lucy said <laughs> if we're kind and polite the world will be right right That's yes, right. yes. Yay. Yes. Aunt, lucy. Yeah. aunt lucy aunt lucy did you ever think of uh road to morocco every time he mentions aunt lucy jordan no I don't remember that. <laughs> Aunt Lucy. She's oh, back. that's right. Yeah, that was, that was Bob Hope and Bing I Gros forgot about Bob that. Hope's Aunt Aunt Lucy. Aunt Lucy. That was a great impression. You've upset her, yeah. And it's the camera. Oh, that is funny. I need yeah. to rewatch that. Yeah, dude. Anyway, I kept thinking that when I watched this. This movie is just as charming and endearing as Road to Morocco. Folks, today we are talking about Paddington 2. The sequel to Paddington Bear 1. It came out in 2017. This was directed by Paul King. And you are the king of directing, my friend, of sequels. This movie's better than the first one. That's why we're reviewing the second one. This one gets special mention from uh, from Nick Cage and Pedro Pascal from The uh, Unbearable Way of Massive Talent. Yeah, They're like, what's your three favorite movies? I can't even remember the other two they chose. And Paddington 2 was one of them. And he's like, Paddington 2? He's like, get out of here. They watch it together. He's wiping tears from his eyes. It's so good. Yeah. Ah, dang it. Guys, what was it like watching this movie for the first time and rewatching it for the podcast? Since I have been, uh, I think since the third week of this podcast, I've been trying to get us to watch Paddington too. So this is a historic moment for me. And I was worried that you guys did the podcast without me because I was late getting here today. So, Cameron, what was it like watching it for the first time, rewatching it for the podcast? Hey, Cam. Um, for me, watching it for the podcast was my first time. And it might be my last. Cameron's like, this is for children. Yeah, this is this lame child show. Wait till you have kids. It was. It was, it was definitely fun. I was kind of struggling. In the I'd seen clips before. I'd seen like the scene with the talking with Mad Eye Moody or whatever his name is. Um, knuckles with, with knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty funny. And so I'd seen scenes of it, and I knew it was like pretty clever and funny. But um, I was pleasantly surprised uh, at the humor. So, yeah, I really enjoyed Laugh it. Laugh out loud funny. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I really like the dad character. He's hilarious. Yeah, a yeah, lot of like old school Charlie Chaplin, Three Stooges humor, like kind of like. Yeah, it has like slapstick humor, but somehow it's like more charming. Char and yeah, as, it's sweet. not as. But I yeah, I hear what you're saying because they did have like a. Uh, He's crawling through the gears, a direct Charlie Chaplin reference, but it did have, um, it, it's not annoying. Like this is the least annoying movie of, of all the kid movies combined. Like, right. Yes. Ty's just used to watching <laughs> 15,000 kid movies with his kids. Oh, I, I have these stupid uh, kid theme songs running through my head right now. I thought about to say I have oh, these gosh, stupid kids, but not too. <laughs> yeah. These days I got these stupid kids. I don't know what to do with, um, Anyway, Nick, how about you watching it for the podcast and rewatch or uh, watching it for the first time and rewatching it now? Well, obviously, watching it for the podcast was the first time. I haven't even heard of this movie until Jordan <laughs> sent me a picture of it. Paddington <laughs> 2. He's like, I think Ty's just trying to mess with you, but he really wants you on for this one. I'm I like, did. Yeah. I was messing with I'm you. Gonna watch, I said, fine. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> and guys, I was pleasantly surprised. Now, listen, I had a little help, but, you know, a little bit of that and then you watch this movie and i'm telling you it was actually quite hilarious and quite funny there were multiple parts that just kind of made me laugh so i was surprised it was fun even for being a pg movie or whatever but yeah yeah i can't say anything bad about it i even told people at work i'm like paddington too watch it <laughs> You're like I don't know how to recommend this, and I'm a little embarrassed. But uh, dude, that's how I, I feel. I didn't even say the embarrassed. I didn't want to add oh, yeah. to it. I just 
Paddington yeah, too. Watch just it. watch it. It's a good movie. I don't know anyone that doesn't like this movie. You know, just want to have a good time. Just, you know, it's take your mind off whatever you had going on for the day. You know, everybody's got a hard life. This, that. You know, maybe, maybe you tie more than the rest of us because you got three <laughs> kids and whole world that's just all up in your face. But for someone like me, you know, I come back from work and I'm just like, oh, I just want to de-stress. This was definitely that it was de-stress get your mind out get your mind away from things type of situation i'm glad i love hearing that and again i know you guys are in softball and cameron even's like i don't think i'll ever watch it again because yeah it, it's a very special movie i watched but it I, twice i watched it yesterday <laughs> and i watched it today before we watched the podcast so i i love it nick i'm so glad you watched it twice and uh jordan how about you man what was it like watching it for the first time and rewatching it um so i didn't get a chance to finish rewatching it but uh yeah for this pod i mean it's all our first time ty has been pushing it on us for a while but uh, yeah, only since 2017 so that makes five <laughs> years well it wasn't to, I, i've had i know Sorry, I've, six years i know i've wanted to but i'm like this is the kind of movie i want to save for the kids and i'm actually really excited to show my future kids this kind of movie because <laughs> i'm going to start having children now because of this movie uh, this, so i can share it with them <laughs> this teaches so many good lessons that uh 100 yes should learn and it, like mm. And I love too that like he's an influence on uh, just the people he's around. Like it, it's not like he's changing the entire world, but it's like you do have an effect about around the people you are like interact with. And I like that. So good movie. Yeah, it's a, a good uplifting film. At first, I was like, okay, Ty, why did you pick this? It's like a very kids, a lot of kid jokes. But then it, it starts to like, oh, he he's having an effect on people. Like th there's a lot of good in here. So. For sure. I love her. Sure. And Jordan's love heart grew three sizes. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I felt like well, mine did, actually. My heart grew a I little know, bit. Dude, I know, dude. I can't tell you enough. This movie gives me the feels, you know? Um, so I watched this back when it came out because I saw the reviews for it. And I was like, that's surprising. Because I watched the first Paddington. So forgettable. And no offense to all the folks that worked on it. But like the first Paddington, I was like, yeah, it, it was. It was like, oh, this is for kids. But I watched this one and I was like, this is one of the top 10 movies I saw that year in 2017. It's on my 2017. It's in my top 15 films that year. And, I, and I'm and i so glad to return to it watching it this time because I actually had trepidation. That's why I wanted to watch Nick because I almost feel like I could bring an unbiased source into all this because, you know, Nick, I know you don't have kids. and um, But I just wanted to hear like an honest opinion. Like you're coming in and you're like, I don't know why I'm being told to watch this. <laughs> And then you watch it, and you're just so surprised because, yeah, every time the movie does subvert my expectations. So watching it again, I'd forgot about a lot of the reasons why I loved it so much initially. And, yeah, I was laugh out loud moments, and it gave me the feels at the right moment. So definitely was overjoyed to see that the movie held up over all this time. So uh, pleasantly surprised. So let's get into two of our favorite things. Uh, let's have you go first, Nick. What are your two favorite things from this movie? Um. Well, I have to say my favorite thing about this movie was, was that I liked it. Okay, first <laughs> off. No, but that, I mean, not knowing anything about it, like I said, I was very surprised. And I'll tell you, actually, uh, instead of like two maybe things specifically that I like, I'm going to tell you two parts <laughs> that I like the most. Okay. And I think that uh, that first one, okay, has to be when um when they when when Paddington first meets knuckles right he's 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 up in there he's eating this little gritty crap or whatever and everybody's Lumpy. like oh, go talk to knuckles get on the change to whatever walks up to him and you know you're gonna complain and no i'm not gonna complain just you know whatever just it's like well i want you to complain then of course he's like okay well then it's you know basically saying, <laughs> yeah, you know and just like that whole and he's taking the me. criticism like oh yeah yeah <laughs> he's yeah, like yeah, tightening yeah. And then he, the rolling pin he gets the the mustard and ketchup on him and he's like oh no and he's just looking up at him he's like i think i'm making it worse <laughs> i was just uh i don't know it was so funny and then when uh they go and they're talking to that security guard at that cathedral about the nuns you remember oh that? my oh. gosh one of my it's favorite hilarious. characters is what Dude. happened here? One of the freaking nuns went berserk. <laughs> yeah, one of the nuns went, get, oh, get back there, sister. <laughs> get back. 
<laughs> he's yelling at the nun that leaves the pack. <laughs> he makes his face to her. He's like, oh, no, you know. Uh, and then when he's explaining what happened, and yes. he's like across, he's, he's like, oh, wait, step down. <laughs> He kept like, her this unusually attractive her. nun, right? <laughs> that was the best part. He's like, this that was so funny. Uh, oh, can you describe this to her? Yeah. <laughs> With pleasure. <laughs> uh, Be happy to. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so good. But even at the end, when Aunt Lucy, you know, shows up, that's like, oh, I didn't cry like Jordan, but I almost felt like I might have. <laughs> yeah. It's very sweet. Yeah. It's yeah. very, very sweet. It was always her dream to see London. Well, go see who that might be. It's like, oh. <laughs> I'm so glad, Nick. Thanks for sharing the scenes. Cause yeah, th that that security guard is like one of the highlights Boy, of this movie yes. for me, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Where's the uncle? Get back, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Just anyone yelling at a nun and the word berserk nun, one of the nuns went berserk, has to be one of the funniest communities. It happens lines. sometimes. <laughs> it's, so... <laughs> yeah. it's so good. Can you Cameron, see how this about as a nun? Can you see <laughs> nuns are funny, dude? Cameron, how about you? Two of your favorite things. Yeah, kind of similar to Nick's. Um, mine are just two characters that I thought added a lot to the film. Um Colonel Lancaster, who was the dude interviewing or talking about the nuns and who saw it all. Mm. I just thought he was so funny in all of his interactions. I was just so caught off guard. <laughs> it just kind of reminds me of uh it reminded me a lot of what's his name from Hot Fuzz and just how he like took every single thing super serious, like even his parking tickets and so stuff. So like Simon that. Pegg's character, Nicholas yeah. Angel. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was super funny. And then um I also loved uh what's his name henry brown like played by hugh bonneville i just thought th that's the dad yeah and i just thought all of his like additions and he just like was so clever and just like the quote i led with of him saying like oh that she's like, where's the man that i married he's like oh him oh he's long gone <laughs> mr I just love Ski oh yeah whatever the you, uh, what did they call that? The carnival game, you know? Yeah, and then, over. and then like that montage uh, or like that flashback of him with the stash <laughs> was so fun. <laughs> Long hair, you know? Yeah. Easy I just thought, rider. I just yeah. thought his like character was really fun. Dude, even the ending with the, the splits, right? He tries to do the Namaste yes, class order. Dude, At the end, he's like, open up your so mind hard. and open up your legs. And he's like, on two trains, he's just like, at one with the universe. And then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like flailing his arms while doing the splits was so funny dude oh it's so good all right jordan how about you two of your favorite things yeah there were some great callbacks uh i liked all the like constantly throughout the movie i'm like oh my gosh like all these they had like so many actors from different shows and movies i love i mean they probably took all the english actors from like harry potter and you got actors from downton abbey and did you even recognize the woman at the flower shop? She was the girl in Shaun of the Dead. She was the yes. one that, yeah, shows up at the end with the military. Um, yes. It's, it's just, yep. yeah, it's just fun to see like all these English actors from different shows and movies I love. Um, and well, uh, and you yeah. recognize the uncle's voice too. You mentioned Harry Potter. Oh. Yeah. I mean, because you have Miss Weasley as, as the grandpa, uh, Grandma Brown, but you also had it, Michael Gambon who did the voice of Uncle Bear. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh Dumbledore. And then Paddington, is he the guy from uh Lobster? Is that who I'm thinking? Um of? no, uh Ben Winshaw was or Wishaw, whatever you say it. Um he was uh Q. He's like the younger Q from Double yeah, Seven. He's yeah. he he's in the lobster. <laughs> what he is? Yeah. I, I thought you were thinking of Colin Farrell. I don't know who no 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 it's I'll have the, to see the lobster again so I've seen it. It no, was no one that. No one watched the last. It's so movie. good. The no, lobster was amazing. There you go. No, see, yeah. See, Nick's on the podcast. He liked Paddington too, and he did not like the lobster. Everybody. No, so. lobster dumb. Paddington's funny. <laughs> Paddington's funny. <laughs> Paddington um, good. Lobster bad. And and I just it. This reminds me a lot of Ted Lasso, which is why I'm shocked you didn't like Ted Lasso, Ty, because it's just like. This, oh, I don't I, like it because it's on Apple. I, I 100%. Oh that's like gosh. the biggest reason. I don't know. Why, it's just like if I, you own it though, right? Now I could watch it. I'll watch it now. No. 
Oh, you don't own it. There you go. I can't watch it. <laughs> I don't have Apple TV. But it it's the similar premise. It's like this adorable little bear kind of brings light to the world. And the, I just like when, as soon as he's gone, suddenly like, you know, you can kind of see the world. I'm getting locked out of my house permanently. <laughs> yeah. And then just like all the things like the, the good that he brings into the world. I, I love that. And I, I like that. It's just, they kept it contained because I, I feel like, you know, I, I hate keep bringing up Disney, but just like they try to save the world. And it's kind of fun that it's like, no, this is all just taking place in this little tiny where he lives and the people he affects. And I feel like that is very relatable. So it's- for sure. Well, I can't believe I'm going last. I'm going to say my favorite part. No one's taken. Hugh Grant as the villain is like one of my favorite. Oh, villains. yes. He is yes, hamming yeah. it up. He is so funny. He's got all these creepy mannequins and he's doing the voices yeah. for all of them because he's like this failed washed up actor that was, yeah. it was so perfect. I, he nails it. He is so funny. He's just like, <laughs> it's like, come now, Hamlet and 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 all these uh, Shakespeare. He has all these uh, famous figures, thespian. Anyway, I just love that. He uh, plays such a funny villain. And the fact like you see him doing like this, uh, dog food commercial and he's like he's just like you might even say dignified and he's just like so humiliated at eating this dog food and then immediately beneath it's like not for humans i know <laughs> right as he takes a bite. for his commercial it's so funny i just golly it was so good anyway yeah hugh grant playing the villain was so delightful so he he is not his highlight. best role don't even try to say yeah it, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen. No, it's, hi you're high. i'll have to watch gentlemen again but i can say hugh grant this is like top three if not top one for sure performances from hugh grant. i'll give you top three not top okay one. perfect so yeah it's so funny <laughs> if i be lying may my entrails be wrapped around my I'd be hung from my entrance i don't know why it just makes me so laugh he's so over the top it's so funny so uh yeah so what are you doing in my house he's like oh uh as your insurance agent we're doing uh, an inspection in your pajamas <laughs> why is he so funny he's so good uh, anyway he makes me laugh so yes hugh grant was number one and then uh two uh how endearing each character is this movie is like how do i say it? it's very cute like every character is like quirky uh, every character has an arc and there's all these callbacks. Everything is so great. Like you said, Jordan, how the town is affected. The lady, uh, when the mother's leaving this stand or whatever and runs into the bike lady and she's like, oh, get out of my way. And she's like, I'm sorry, I'm very angry when I haven't had breakfast. And you're like, she was getting breakfast from Paddington every morning. And then the guy gets locked out of the house. Like you said, you see the whole neighborhood affected. But uh, yeah, it's just a very sweet film because let me give you a quick comparison on how not to do it. No offense to the folks that work on Minions, but there's a very similar plot point where the Minions end up in prison. And this is a movie that teaches like, yeah, even in your situation, all the prison guards hate him because he gets one red sock in <laughs> the, the laundry and then all the, the guards' outfits turn pink, which is super cute. It's super funny and disarming. I mean the inmates, not the guards. Oh, excuse me. The inmates. Correct. Correct. Uh, so the inmates clothing and outfits uh, are all pink and it's, it's very endearing. And then, yeah, the introduction of uh, uh, not Donham Gleason, his father, what's Matt, his Matt name? I Moody. <laughs> what's his name though? I have to, I have to grace him by his name. Gleason something. Donald. I can't find it here. He's not here. What's his name? Something Gleason, Mr. Gleason. Um, but um, I loved the, uh, just how endearing it was to Brendan to, Gleason. Brent, oh, it is Brent. I'm sorry. Oh, Brendan, but not Brandon. Brendan Gleason. And um, I really like how uh, Nick even brought up the quote, right? Aunt Lucy says, be nice and everything will be right. And it's just like, it teaches your kids a good thing. It's not annoying and obnoxious. And there's a great character in this movie that most of us forget about, the police guard. He's more prominent in the first movie, but he's all like, you all let Paddington into your lives uh, well, and, and in your homes. He's like, but I didn't. I kept my lock under, I kept my door under triple lock as per regulation. <laughs> but he's like, all of you let Paddington into your lives and he betrayed us all. And then what's so great, they're all like, you prejudge Paddington, like, you know, before you even get to know him and you've been completely wrong about him. And it's just a great way to teach kids about prejudices and stuff like that, which, but it's not, obnoxious and it's not ham-fisted it's like a very sweet moment because everyone in the city bands together and they all push the car out of this it's so great like every seeming callback seeming so small like oh 
Mrs. Brown is preparing to swim the English Channel. And then like she literally dives in to go save Paddington after the train goes into the water. Uh, the Mr. Brown with the the skeet ball thing, you know. Um, yes, so good at that. The the, right. the yoga class, and he ends up becoming one. Like every character has. I loved something. his wig when he's throwing the Jonathan ball. Jonathan Brown. It's like, hey, J Dog, really impressive. And he's like, my name's not J Dog, it's Jonathan Brown, and I like steam trains. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like really sweet that every character gets like a like a really compelling arc, and it's very quick, but it's very well done, and it's like a lot of care went into this movie, whereas. Um, you know, with sequels, I think a lot of people just say, yeah, it's, it's a freaking kid's sequel. Like, who cares about this movie? But just a lightning in a bottle really is. And then, of course, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite uh, uh, quotes from this whole movie is this whole silly scene where they get the talent acquisition lady to say that they're having this meeting to get Hugh Grant out yeah, of the, the apartment. Who and at the end, him? brought her a bread <laughs> basket and she's like, really nice buns, by the way. Yeah, really nice <laughs> he's buns. like, I beg your pardon. Really nice buns. <laughs> so oh, good. Thank you, I've never complained about yeah, thank you. No <laughs> one's complained about. Che he like names his cheeks. That's so yeah. funny. It's just so silly, but uh, yeah, great, great scene. And, and they use humor, like uh, quirky humor too. There's... Um, one of my favorite video essays guys on YouTube talks about like how Edgar Wright uses like people coming into frame as a comedy. There's a great scene where Paddington is like talking and then Knuckles comes around the corner and then like all these inmates are filling up the screen and they're all there because he's made every single one of the inmates there loves him and they're like willing to fight for him. And he's like, if any of you mess with the bear, he's with me. So and that's just, there are a great. bunch of criminals and he's like, you, we can still hear. <laughs> yeah, turn yeah, off the light. Off the light. The, light <laughs> the mic is on the other side of the wall. Gentlemen, if I've said anything to offend you, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> do do so we recommend good. it? I think so. Oh, yes. For all ages. Do everyone. Everyone can see this. Guys, if you haven't seen this movie, drop what you're doing. Watch it. Perfect date movie. Perfect uh, cool uncle movie. Bring it over to your nephews. They'll love it. A dude, uh, right. What's called, when I was in the MTC, a dude asked a girl in my um group on a date and he said paddington 2 and paddington instead of two netflix and and dude like, amen dude paddington. Oh, just watch oh, this movie oh, over and over and i gotta say i watched cocaine bear earlier this year and paddington is much more compelling and interesting bear than cocaine bear ever was which is a shame so yeah watch this movie folks i, I couldn't imagine seeing cocaine paddington but uh what have you seen lately, Cameron? And what are you looking forward to? All righty, I'm just pulling it up right now. Okay, well, I'll do my list really quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm glad you, you waited for me to get ready. You know, <laughs> Cameron, what have you done? Just pulling it up. All right, so this is what I've been seeing. <laughs> I'm ready. Unless you're ready. I'm ready, but it's fine. Just go. Okay, so I saw A Touch of Evil, which is an old classic, very fun movie. Maybe one day we'll review it. I don't know. Uh, it's got the guy from the old, uh, like, Ben-Hur, and because it's crazy now there's a remake of it. But then there's also, like, Moses. And uh, did you ever see the original Planet of the Apes, Cameron? No, I've seen clips of clips it, and it's it. illegal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's classic. And then I uh, rewatched Tucker and Dale vs. Evil with my wife. Oh. I, I I rewatched the founder. I need to watch that, dude. The founder's amazing. It's up there with like, I think, Social Network. I just think it's so good. Not as good, but it's good. Um, and then I saw Glory. Uh, very good. Red Letter Media said it's one of his favorite movies. So I'm like, well, I gotta check it out. And it was really, really good. Denzel Washington kills it. I mean, I got teary eyed. And then I watched Grave of Fireflies. That is the most depressing movie I've ever seen. It's like an anime version of The Road. Oh, my goodness. And then I watched uh, Gongium Haunted Asylum, which I was so terrified. I had turned the volume all the way down, and then I had to cover half the screen just because it was freaking me out so much. And then I turned on all the lights. <laughs> and uh, I watched Your Name. Very good. And The Conversation. Uh, Your Name is like Frequency meets Freaky Friday. It's kind of fun. And then The Conversation, interesting movie. It's not my favorite. Uh, just some of these old movies are, I don't know. There's like parts I really love. And then it's just that kind of old timey feel. I know how you guys just don't like it at all, but it, it sometimes does kind of like bug me a little bit, like just kind of that old sound. And I don't know. I do love old movies. Don't get me wrong. But I, I watched, I watched something that had that same feeling where I was like, mm. 
<laughs> and I know Nick does not like some of those old movies. But and then I also watched The Fableman, which uh, Cameron, you would really like it. It's kind of got like a high school drama stuff. So and... like rom com or what or. Um, no, it's so there's part of it that I loved, which is him making movies because uh, it's about Steven Spielberg growing up. Um, oh, but, yeah, I heard about this. But then I, I just didn't care for like the mom. Oh, I sorry. I don't want to spoil it. But so just you'll she drives me crazy. I know I can already hear you saying in my head, you know, oh, which is funny, Karen. I watched uh, the, the McDonald's movie with my wife and she said that about the, you know, that girl because. She's Bro, totally she was a whore. Yeah, she's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, you're successful. Oh. Yeah, she's yeah. a gold digger. What about you, Nick? What have you seen lately? And what are you looking forward oh, to? Oh my gosh, what have I not seen lately? A lot of things. What I have actually seen lately, I finished up the second part of you on Netflix. What up? Okay. Yeah, you I use, I stopped watching that after season two or three. Yeah, you gotta keep after going. three, and I watched. Uh, I watched. Uh, you know what? <sighs> Uh, what else did I see? There was this other movie I really liked. Can't remember the name, but of course I did watch that new Chris Rock special. Did you check that out? Mm -mm. What you mean you didn't check that out? <laughs> <laughs> I don't love Chris Rock as much as you do. You gotta check it out, man, because he talks about hey, the you slap. You need to check out um, on slap. YouTube. Oh, he, talks about the slap. he talks about the slap right at the end. It's he makes you wait the whole time. Uh, but he gets at that slap and he goes hard. And, you know, if you know Chris Rock's comedy, you've seen him before. Chris Rock, his comedy, he's, he's always pretty well, you know, holds his composure pretty well. He's always very well, like, organized. And, and you know, he's, he's, he's got this way. But this last one, you could tell his, like, emotions kind of let out a little bit there. You know, you could tell he, his, the upsetness got out a little bit, you know, so... It was interesting to watch. Yes. You seen anything else? A couple other things, man, but not of, not of, you know, just nope. whatever. Yeah, not of. Yeah. Not did of. Uh, but are you looking forward to anything besides John Wick? Oh, John Wick. What else is coming out? Uh, well, John Wick. <laughs> what else? I don't know. Nick, That's Nick. Look. You need to watch um on YouTube um there's uh videos of like the the show you without um the like the die or the what's it called when he oh the voiceover by him and it is yeah. so funny because it, it's like it's really like clever with it but then without it it's just like super awkward like because <laughs> it's like when it's actually, oh like, yeah his world or whatever and he's just and they're like you want to go to the game and then <laughs> yeah I love that. <laughs> it's so funny. But um, and then what I've sure. seen, um, Nick and then Nick, are you done seeing talking about what you've seen? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, and then um, what I've seen lately, I watched kind of like Jordan was talking. I watched a movie from my film class called Daughters of Dust, and it's just about like these um, like second or third generation um people who like their ancestors were slaves and they're like either just after slavery and trying to like um assimilate or whatever to new life and i don't know there's just something about, it was made in 1993 and i you can tell it was made in 1993 <laughs> but i don't know it definitely just not up my alley i really struggled to pay attention um gave it a three out of ten and then i watched crazy stupid love mm. yeah i have mixed feelings about that one there's moments where i'm like this is like it made me laugh like out loud like six or seven times where i was like wow this is that's pretty impressive but then there were so many moments where i was like this is a horrible message yes also weird like plot twist that i was like yeah that plot twist made me laugh pretty hard though that ryan yeah, I, I love that ryan gosling i just didn't like the whole premise. thing about her loving michael uh, or what's his name steve carell i was just like this is weird. Like I never laughed once in that. It was always uncomfortable. I was like, why is this included in like an already like risque? I don't know. Just weird. And then, but I mean, gosh, dang, Ryan Gosling's body in that. Dang boy. Um, and then I watched burnt with, uh, 
Bradley Cooper, kind of similar to Stup- uh, Crazy Stupid Love. Very mixed feelings. There was moments where I was like, oh, wow, this is like fantastic, like maybe a nine out of 10. And there's just a lot of moments where I'm like, I don't know if this film knows where it's going. And there's like no direction. <laughs> I was just like, it's just Bradley Cooper yelling and swearing at people. I was like, maybe it's, it, it literally, for me, it reminded me a lot of like, just watching clips of what's that one chef that just yells and cusses at people. Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay. And then um, I've just been watching a lot of modern family and then also um, watched a little bit of death Net with grant. We're going to um, try to binge this weekend. Yes. And then I watched a French film, I believe called petite maman, which is like a really um, well-made film. It won like a bunch of awards or whatever, but really awesome film. And then um I think that's everything that I've seen lately and just looking forward to mainly just watching death note. Cause especially cause we're going to watch it with drew this weekend. Um, Has he seen it? No, Drew's never yes, seen it. Yes. Yes. So about to just induct him. Are, are you going to go see John wick in the theaters? Cameron? This weekend? No, I don't got that kind of cash. I'll pay $5 on $5 Tuesday for it. But... Okay. I didn't know if you were excited for it though. Are I think I... Jordan, are you going right this weekend, Jordan? I'm considering it. I, the problem is uh, Resident Evil 4, the remake, comes out the exact same day. So I'm like, Why don't you see both of them? I'm conflicted. It's not a movie. It's a video game. So it's Why like, don't you see the movie and then do the video game? Because I want to play the video game so bad and it's going to be a lot a long commitment. So, hmm. yeah. But then I also um, have the glory on my watch list. I think, Jordan, you recommended that to me. Uh, I mean, if I did, I did it today because I just watched it this week. <laughs> Might have been somebody else that recommended Good it. Movie, the Civil War movie, Denzel Washington, Matthew. Yeah, Brown. it's a Denzel's performance. Ty is amazing. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. Really what good. about you, Ty? What have you seen lately, and what are you looking forward to? I'm sorry, I missed it. Do we already do Paddington? No, we're gonna go back and do it. We okay, just thought we'd right. do this while we waited. Um. So I watched. Uh. I went and saw Creed three at the theater. I really liked it. Uh, I was really sad because I heard that Sylvester Stallone wasn't gonna be in it. They kind of did him dirty. He doesn't own the rights to Rocky, so they kind of did him out of the story. But um, Michael B. Jordan does a really good job at being a mentor. While also well, that's like weird because he was in Creed 1 and 2. It, right. I just think I, I, either eventually they hit, I don't know. But he there's there's definitely beef and uh, drama going on there. But uh, yeah, Sylvester Stallone doesn't own the rights, whether they saw creative differences or whatever. But this is the first Creed movie that doesn't have Sylvester Stallone. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, I really liked it. I think Michael B. Jordan's a really good director. He directed this movie, which I thought was really Mm -hmm. impressive. So, you know, you star in it, but uh, he does a really good job because Jonathan Majors is this big actor right now. He was in the Ant-Man Quantum Mania. I didn't see it, but um, apparently he's a force to be reckoned with because I saw him in Loki and I didn't, wasn't really impressed, but he was really good in this movie. Um, And holy smokes, you want to talk about a rip dude. Do you think Michael B. Jordan's cut? Look at Jonathan Majors in Creed 3. I was like, this guy is the most ripped person I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, his body transformation is insane. If you look it at him before, nuts. he looks like a nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just he's like, just like, just a, a Joe, you know? And it wasn't Michael like, B. Jordan's always been kind of like big and yeah, strong. He's always, yeah, he's always cut. He looks athletic and everything. But Jonathan Majors looks like a freaking monster, like out yeah. of nightmares. And you would not want to get into a boxing ring with him. And the punches, they land, dude. This movie's good. It was really well done, and I love the drama around it. And it's uh, it's a tight hour and forty minutes, I think. And I almost wish they would have made it like twenty minutes longer, but or it's like an hour and fifty six minutes, I guess. I just looked at the MDB, but uh, it's it's really good. I I've really listened to some it. of the soundtrack, and it sounds amazing. Oh, so- soundtrack was awesome. Maybe, dude, there's movies like this that just made me wish I was black, dude. Seriously, yeah. But then is... I think, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, I love this movie. Creed 3 is awesome, guys. Seriously, you guys should watch it. It was the top five movies I've seen this year in theater, for sure. Better than three again, for sure. And this is the this is a three movie. This, <laughs> this is a true third movie. It's Creed 3. And I didn't even watch the second Creed. I only watched the first Creed to give people some background. Second Creed is, is still pretty good. I've heard it's pretty good, too. But I I think from the people... I, I went to the theater with a uh, friend that said he saw creed one he's seen all of he watches only sports movies so i thought it was a good friend to take and he really liked this one too and he said it was better than the second so Mm. yeah because i think i think second is maybe even borderline better than the first i don't know they're both really good 
They're both yeah, like really. I now want to. I do now want to watch it though. Yeah, it's he's very compelling. And uh, any thoughts of whether Michael B. Jordan was charismatic enough? They're gone after watching a movie like this. Like he does a great job. It's just charisma, uh, stoic, uh, intense. The only thing that was missing is throwing the Rocky hands in the air. They didn't have it in this movie. <laughs> he yells on top of the Hollywood sign, but I was like, dude, do, do the Rocky hands, man. You know the motion. Just do it. <laughs> so, yeah, they're like, D don't think about Sylvester Stallone and how he's not in this movie. Don't think about it. And then um, other than that, I just watched District 9. I think Did I mention this last week or not? I probably did. I don't know. can't remember if I mentioned District 9 and then Fargo. We watched that as the podcast. I don't know what else I watched. That, that might be it. Oh, I'm watching the one last thing directed by Jason Bateman. Okay. So alone is the survivalist show that I really, really love on Netflix. Yeah. They basically, Jason Bateman has like an Ozark dark version of alone where it's Lord of the flies where you're as a survivalist team, you can go out and like start, you know, gathering moisture, collecting food to, to survive. And if you win this, you win a big amount of money, but in this game, there's no rules. So you can like sabotage other people's like, it's like it's it's pretty horrific because basically it's just the meanest team is going to win but i don't know if i'm going to keep watching because i'm like you already had a good thing i love you know man versus nature but now it's just like who is like borderline criminal and has no shame in sending in someone else's home by like cutting open all their hard work like cutting holes in their tent uh you know uh destroying their food source it's just it's awful. But anyway, when I saw it was directed by Jason or uh, excuse me, produced by Jason Bateman, I was like, of course it was. Like it's like you know it'd be great with the 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 TV show survivalist show alone. What if it was, you know, dark and sad and depressing and bleak? It just sounds Welcome. like Survivor though, because that's I I'm sure I'm sure it's a lot. And see, I've never seen Survivor, but oh. if I'm not mistaken, they vote to leave, correct? Yeah. No, or no, they no. vote the people... they vote a person out, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. In this show, you have to volunteer to leave. Like you, you no one else can vote you out. But basically, you're so miserable, you just want to go home, or you're gonna to starve to death. Like, so again, Jason Bateman. When I saw his name on, I'm like, yeah, like just like take take the most awful premise. Anyway, it's just funny when I see these reality TV shows. I'm like, oh, the survival show is fine. You don't need to add your own sick twist on it, Jason Bateman. Anyway, he's just a producer. He didn't write it or anything or create it, but he funded it. He's funding it. So anyway. That's uh, the, it's called Outlast, by the way, which makes me think of the most terrifying, violent video game of all time. The freaking, the what's that game where you're in the insane asylum with the video camera? Yeah, Outlast, right? Yeah. But anyway, the show's called Outlast on Netflix, so check it out or don't. It's you just feel crummy watching it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Creed Three, go check it out. Way, 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 way. And we all know what you're looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow I've got tickets to go see John Wick. Like really good seats, you know, right behind the handy, capable people. So I'll be putting my feet up on their armrests. They can smell my feet and dip it. I'll dip my heels in their popcorn. Go with the wife. Move over, losers. This movie's for me. Ty. Yeah. You going with the wife or just yourself? Dude, I'm going with a, a with my brother-in-law, dude. I don't want, yeah, I don't want oh. Natty, you know, feminining up the movie. You know, she's like, where's all the oh. women representation? I'll be like, take that. Yeah. Go, man. Usually so they have some pretty bad A girls kicking butt though. And oh, they do always yeah. in these movies. And it never feels forced. It's like, oh, cool. It's like a murderous wench. I love it. And they use like their seductive charms to try to get past these men, but they're way too smart for their wiles. <laughs> Everybody, this has been Future Hidden Movie Gems. We love you. Leave us an email, futuremovies at gmail.com. Check us out on YouTube. I have a bubble in my throat. And uh, it's great seeing you all. We love you. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Peace.